boys will step up to the plate. We'll see what happens. So here's Jesus' logic. You know, he's saying, here's the old law. Here's what you're not doing. You're using this foreman thing. You're going to give it to God. Uh, not right. So he's pointing that out <clears throat> to them. Any question or comment before we go? Yes. And at the end here, he says, when you do many things such as that, what you already pointed out was that they were experts. So if every loophole was to the bear, they found yeah. anything they could do to lift themselves up in spite of God's word, they did. Yeah. Now, taking a step back, first of all, you had traditions of men and God's commandments. Which one probably is the harder to do? Yeah. yeah. God's command would be tougher, but if we didn't have this and went to this, it would be a whole lot easier. I can see somebody trying to fulfill both. Yeah, sometimes the traditions of men can be hard to follow, too, because they mm-hmm. Hold that thought too. We're going to culminate with this here in a minute. In fact, right now. May open up a can of worms. I do have an elder here that can put it back together. So I'm back side of the Is it wrong to have a tradition or tradition that do not violate God's word? Okay. Do we have traditions here at River Ridge Church of Christ? I hear yeah, I think yes, and I'm hearing more yes. Okay. In what way do we have to do? Okay. Services, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Wednesday night, what else? Bible class, what else? Okay. Order of worship. Order of worship. We come in, time to services. Why is all that? Set in place. Okay. We have to do the things what? Decent and normal. God does not want the fusion coming in to worship. So therefore, yeah. In the Mm-hmm. Where's that some of that general authority? Now, in the worship, do you not have specific specific authority? Yeah, there's some things you have to do, right? Now, let me throw this scenario out. We come in, I hope I'll get this one right here. We have an announcement, two songs, prayer, no song. Lord Supper, so far so good. Communion, blessing, invitation. More announcements than these in closing prayer. I'll touch everything kind of in the right order. Okay. In that scenario, would it be wrong to say have <clears throat> the contribution after the invitation but before the closing prayer? Okay. So even though we have decent and orderly, we're not finding it. Okay. Number of songs before the opening prayer. I wish all of you here that led three or four songs before the opening. Okay. Do we have scriptures that we can go to that says there are good traditions that does not violate God's will? There it is. <laughs> Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 11, and we'll see what I'm saying to God. And whoever gets there first, go ahead and jump in. Read that for us. First Corinthians 11, so you guys. Now I pray to you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the traditions just as I have been written. Hmm. Isn't that a good position? Yeah. Hold firmly to the position that Paul has delivered those things to God. Okay, so that's a good position. 
you know, we've been talking about the negative, right? Okay, there's one of the positives. Second Thessalonians uh, 2.15. And whoever gets there first. In favor. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the conditions with you, whether by word of word of mouth or by the word of promise. All right, here's Paul in the second Micah congregation. <clears throat> oh, to those traditions which he had been taught, whether I spoken or had been spoken, or whether we wrote a letter, go circulate. There's another good tradition. That's yes, Nikki. <laughs> Examples from the apostles in the name of people. What did they do on the first day of the week? What was, you know, that's more of a direct man contribution. Uh, when Paul and those that went traveling, what did they do on the first day of the week? They went and worshiped. Uh, baptism. Again, another example. What I was trying to point out here, there are some good traditions listed in the Bible that we need to adhere to. That the bad negative, and then you get some positive. Yes, Nancy. Yes. That's the three ways of establishing the thought book peace. So when we're talking about authority, what three ways do we have in the Bible that will establish that authority? I didn't I'm going to get a lesson on authority now. Oh, question? Oh, question? Yeah. Direct man, we can deal with that, right? <clears throat> Thou shalt not, you know, do, yes, no, no. Examples? They don't necessarily have to be from the apostles, correct? Right? Okay, there's examples from non apostles that are still evangelism, still God use them for a purpose, okay? Still up in the unit. There's an example there of baptism. And Dean. And these letters just weren't staying at one congregation. No, I bet. They were floating around the other areas. In fact, it was. Some was even told, hey, take this over and let this. <laughs> they weren't doing right. Not to do it, they taking it on the middle. Necessary, I heard it necessary instance, and that's the one that you kind of have to put two, two together to infer that it is there. Okay, uh, that's probably the toughest out of the three because we can do command and example, but when you start having to put scriptures together to get a conclusion, that's one that kind of trips us up. Any other thoughts or comments?
Uh, let's go into 14 through 23. Uh, we may have to end in the middle of this and pick up on it next week. I don't know where to stop that, but we're going to read 14 through 23. I'll with the say, see over there. Okay, everybody's pointing to the back corner. Okay. Who's going to pass my blessing? I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, cross twenty twenty one. Dave, you want to read 20, for us? All right, back up to 14. <laughs> now, here we have Jesus dealing with the Pharisees and the dishes of men and he flips over. Uh, again, uh, same crowd, maybe. Maybe a different one. We don't know, but he said after he called the crowd to him again, he told him to listen to me. Okay. All of you, if not part, everybody that was there within his lane to talk and understand. With that statement, what is Jesus trying to uh, make? So listen to me, all of you, and understand. Yeah. And it's also a lesson on authority. Where else do we know the statement is made? Listen to me. Hopefully, a couple of these are obvious. Now, the transfiguration. Listen to me. And that came from who? God the Father to the Son Jesus. And that's the first three passages right there. They're all parallel. Matthew 17, 5, 9. Listen to me. Where does all authority come from? Okay, that's from Matthew 28. Even early on in Jesus' when we first read about him, Matthew, or excuse me, Mark 1, 22. He's gone down to Jerusalem at 12 years old. Daniel left him, came back, found him where? In the temple. What was the reaction of those that was around him? Verse 22. Of Mark. Chapter 1, anybody got it? Yeah, they were amazed, one of having a thought. He, he was, I think he was 12 years old at that time. And he had teachers of the law, probably some Pharisees that were scribes whatever questioning him and I can see him questioning them and they were made that he had authority. And in that chapter if you go into verse twenty seven it states what? Mark one twenty seven Yeah. When he got older and it reads uh they were amazed because they asked, you know, what is this? Is this a new teaching with authority? Okay. It was a new teaching. I mean, he was teaching O law, but he was bringing everybody up to his law. So uh, he was laying the groundwork, and they called it a new teaching. But my emphasis is 
good authority. And then the final one is uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. And then in verse number 2, uh, For we know what commandments we gave, gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. So here's Paul saying, we don't give you commandments, but you know, on the authority of Jesus. There's their authority part. Any questions or comments? I just thought, you know, that one statement there, the other folks can say, hey, listen to me. I'm authority. I'm God. I was there from the beginning. What was Jesus step back and try to get the big picture here in less than a minute? And looking at verses 15 through 20, what picture was Jesus trying to deal with? What was he trying to deal with as the big picture? That's one. Did you get the sense that Jesus gave them a quick nutshell biology lesson on digestive system? Yeah, I thought about that. You know, I've looked at this past for many years and just thought, what goes in the mouth, it's eating, through the stomach, go. Okay? You don't have to worry about it. It's gone. It goes through the mouth. It may upset our stomach or whatever. But in a nutshell, he's just shot in that. But yet he goes and says, what about uh, defiling the person? Not what goes in, but what goes out. Real quick, somebody going to hit the buzzer. Application today. This little thing in, in the mouth can get us in trouble real quick. James 119, we'll stop right there. Okay. But we'll talk a little bit about the tongue. Good evening. If you take your song books and turn to four zero four. Four zero four. We'll sing that song before Tim brings us our lesson this evening. Four zero four. Looking to Thee from day to day, trusting Thy grace along the way, knowing that Thou wilt safely keep all that is Thine. Sure, Thy soul's redeeming love, sure of a crown of life above. Sing my praise, I press along, Savior divine. Looking to thee, trusting my grace. I'm as happy as a true soldier can be. Nearing my own heavenly place. Trusting thy love, I press along, looking to thee. Looking to thee for all I need, finding in thee a friend in thee. All of the burdens of the day, meekly I bear. 
Neither the foe nor storm I fear, Savior divine, for thou art near. Ready my cares and troubles all freely to share. Looking to thee, trusting thy grace. I as happy as the truth soldier can be. Nearing my own heavenly flame. Trusting thy love, I press along, looking to thee. After a while in heaven bright, where there is neither sin nor not, I shall behold thee face to face, Jesus my own. Then with the love that's gone before, I shall be raptured more and more. Praise thee forever, new and bright, beautiful throne. Looking to Thee, trusting Thy grace, I'm as happy as a true soldier can be. Hearing my own heavenly flame, trusting Thy love, I press along, looking to Thee. Song of invitation will be 337. 337. <laughs> Good to see everyone out tonight. Uh, originally, Gene had the invitation for tonight, but I told him on Sunday that if I travel a lot and can't be here sometimes, it's uh. He would wouldn't be mind me bumping him and letting me take the take the invitation tonight. So he he was cordial to do that. So I appreciate that. Uh, we're going to look at tonight at a lesson from the Old Testament. Um, you would turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter nine. If you've been in the younger kids class and the teens class, this is something we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks um, in the Baker series. We've talked been talking about um, the plagues, Moses and Aaron, and uh, and Pharaoh, so we're going to learn a, a lesson about Pharaoh tonight, and maybe what not to be like Pharaoh. So we're going to look at chapter nine of Exodus, and we're going to read initially uh, verses twenty-seven through thirty. Then Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron and said to them, "I have sinned this time. The Lord is the righteous one, and I and my people are the wicked ones. Make supplication to the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail." and I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I go out of the city, I will spread my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be hail no longer, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that do, you do not yet fear the Lord God. So he was, he was bargaining with God. I mean, he, he didn't have any intention of letting the people go. He was just trying to get the hail to stop, you know, the immediate oppression. What do, what do I have to do to get this to stop? He's trying to outsmart God. We all know that Pharaoh couldn't outsmart God, and we can't outsmart God either. But uh, er earlier in uh, Exodus chapter 6 and verse 1, God had already told uh, Moses and Aaron in uh, chapter 1 of, of, I mean, the verse 1 of chapter 6, the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh, for under compulsion he will let them go, and under compulsion he will drive them out of his land. So they already knew that only when he felt compelled, like there's nothing else I can do, I cannot smart God, he finally given up. Only then would he let the people go. So they already knew uh, that these plagues were not going to be enough, that there's going to have to be something final, the final plague. Uh, when Moses, when uh, Pharaoh would throw his hands up and say, "Okay, I've had enough. I, I'm going I'm to give in," so Pharaoh hadn't reached that point yet in this plague of the the hail and the and the fire from heaven. So when we uh, when we align our will with God, then we're really not following God's will. We're following our own will because 
you know, we're not filtering that logic through our head. Every time we hear a command or we read something, we think, well, is that a good thing or not? Well, I think it's a good thing. God should have told us that, and that's a good thing to do. So I'm going to do that. So when, if I'm not following God's will by saying God said it, therefore I'm going to do it. If I'm thinking myself, is that a good thing to do or not? Then obviously, if it's not a good thing, then I won't do it, right? I'll sin because I won't, I won't be following God's will. So you know, we've got to make sure that if we're, we're following God's will, but we're not filtering everything through our head thinking what God said is it a good thing for me to do or not. It's always a good thing for, for us to do. So if we think back to Abraham, and let's go back to Genesis uh, chapter 12 and look at verses 1 through 4. You know, we know uh, the promise that was given to Abram at this time about him trusting in God. So uh, verses 1 through 4, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house and to the land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram sent forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So we don't see that Abram filtered this through his mind and said, you know, I've been wanting to go on, a, on an adventure. I think I'll just, that's a great idea, God. Let's, let's do that. You know, he didn't think, uh, I don't like it where I am. He just, God said go, and he packed up and he went. So he didn't process all that through. Had he done that, he might have said, you know, I really like it here, God. I don't want to leave. But he didn't. He got up and did what, what God had asked him to do. So, you know, we don't want to be like Pharaoh, only being obedient when we have no other choice. Right? When his back was finally against the wall, he had lost his first, the firstborn, his child. All the other firstborn had, had died. You know, at that point, he finally got to the point where he said, okay, that's enough. I'll give in. We don't want to be like that. We want to follow God because God uh, told us what to do and we believe uh, in him and we trust in him. So that path, you know, going down that path is very dangerous. And that's why we sin. Because we think about the things that God said, but it's what do I want to do right now? I don't really, when we sin, we're essentially saying, God, I don't care what you said. I'm going to do what I want to do. It's my will and I'll do it. And so, you know, as Christians, we want that's a dangerous path to walk on. We've all been down that path every time we sin. That's what we do. So we don't want to do that. So God, you know, God is not a God of convenience, you know, where we fall back on you know, when things don't work out for ourselves. Well, let me try this for myself. If it doesn't work, then I'll pray to God. You know, he's, he's there for us all the time, but we have to put our trust in him. We have to, to learn that, you know, sometimes the hard way, I need to follow what God said and not trust in myself because we should learn from others' mistakes. And here we want to learn from Pharaoh's mistake. Pharaoh should have said a long time ago, you know, I see the power that you have. I, I'm no master you. Please, please um, take these people. Get them out of here. I don't want any more, any more uh, plagues. But he had to go through 10 of them. And God said he would multiply his power through these plagues before Pharaoh would finally give in. So. We don't want to. We don't want to be like that. We want to follow God's will and always trust in Him. So, go ahead and get your songbooks out. We'll turn to song number three hundred and thirty-seven. But you know, what about you? Are you trusting in yourself these days? You know, if you're not a Christian, you're definitely trusting in yourself. If you're the age of accountability and you haven't become haven't become a Christian, you're not following God's will. God wants you to become a Christian and obey Him. And if you're not, and you're you know, you're in a dangerous situation if you were to die, die tonight, or you know, we'd never know when our, what our time is going to be. And if you're a Christian and you, um, you know, you've been doing your own thing, following your choices most of the time and not what God said, then, you know, you, you can't have one foot in the world and the other foot, uh, as a Christian because you're sitting on the fence and you're, you're, you're lost. I mean, there's, there's just no, no hope there. You gotta, Fix that and, and do God's will. So if either one of those are your situations, please come forward now as we stand and sing the invitation song.
Nailed to the cross, his life our right with God. Dost thou count all things for Jesus but lost, his life our right with God. His life our right with God. Washed in the crimson blood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly. Right in the sight of God. Has no dominion or self and or sin. Is my heart right with God? Over all evil without and within. Is my heart right with God? Is my heart right with God? Washed in the crimson blood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly, right in the sight of God. Our own life, our thunder, Jesus' control, is thy heart right with God. Does each moment abide in my soul? Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Wash in the crimson blood, cleanse and make holy, humble and holy, right in the sight of God. Have a good crowd with us this evening. It's good to see each and every one of you here. Uh, for our visitors that are visiting with us, glad you are here. Hope you'll come back anytime that you are in the area. Uh, Chuck, tell me anything. Just one announcement, an update. Uh, the week of October 5th, the uh, carpet company is going to do good and they're replacing it all uh, for free, of course. Um, we'll get the sample before they put it down, but that's the week they're going to put down. Take out this old carpet and put in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tina was telling me that uh, Sam Bain just had some, uh, some tests, lab tests, and if they don't come back favorable, uh, that she won't be able to have chemo. Uh, it's pretty cool. favorable results for Sam, but it's just the people with high school cancer for the chemo. And uh, Bernice's sister has been coming along really well. What, that's the latest news talk with Bernice today. And uh, her sister is improving every day. So thank you for the prayer. For the Four. Okay. There's a lot of prayers needed, so you know, let's keep, let's keep these people in our prayers. And, and Lord willing, we'll be back Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship service. Uh, Matt, would you lead our closing prayer, please? Lord, we thank you for this time
remember and get back to the normal state of health. Pray that you heal those who have lost loved ones and children, Lord, and that you will help us in during this sad time and difficult time and that they will be able to, to get past this and to be going to live their lives, Lord. And pray that you be with all those who are traveling and watch over them and protect them and keep it safe. Thank <laughs> you. 